What's up guys and welcome to Unmechanical Extended Edition. This is a new and improved version of Unmechanical from 2012. Now on current generation consoles, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. So why don't we head into it? The best way to show off on Mechanical is basically to start from the very beginning. It sort of shows some of the rudimentary elements of the game, and it also doesn't spoil too much of the puzzle. The story here isn't too demanding, just because it isn't done with dialogue, it's done with visual cues and very limited visual cues of that. The story is very up for presentation, but basically you play as a little robot here who gets taken away from his other robot friends into a deep underground cave, where he finds many mysteries and many, many puzzles on his way out of this cave. And it's a very, very nice and simple control set, and it's very open-ended because of that. You can literally play this game with one hand on the PS4 controller, which is really awesome for those who might have an issue with how standard control setups are. Unfortunately, you can't go into the settings and change the controls, but you won't really ever need to because every single button basically does the same thing except for move and the hint button. But basically, we play as this little robot and we have a little thing right here. You can see a little wave thing that comes out of our butt <laughs> and it will pick things up for us. And basically, there's a lot of um, physics-based puzzles, but the puzzles themselves are actually very varied. They are really genuine in that way. So it looks like here, we have to press this button down and I'll open up this gate, but we can't do it fast enough, so we're gonna have to go get a rock and pick that up. So in something like Portal, you have the Portal Gun, and the whole game is based around that Portal Gun, and because of that, you have this one mechanic that is focused on the entire game, and because of that, you have one type of puzzle that's pretty dominant. In Unmechanical, you have one asset to you, and it's the ability to suck and pick things up with your little wave beam here. But it's a little different, because it's a lot more simple and open-ended, you can have a lot more different puzzles. We'll see quick time puzzles, we'll see physics space puzzles, we'll see press the button puzzles, we'll see Simon Says type puzzles coming up in a moment. Because of that, you do get a very fresh variety of different type of puzzles and tasks and challenges, and it makes it nice for people who are newer at puzzle games because of how simple the control scheme is, because of how simple everything really is. So it looks like here, if we pull this, a rock will go flying by, but go into the next tube. So what are we gonna be doing about that? It looks like, hmm, I'm not really sure, but there is a little button down there that none of the rocks seem to fit in. So let's sort of try to solve our own problem here by picking up one of these rocks and placing it in front of that tube. And you can see, I, I would say that the solutions for the majority of puzzles are relatively simple. Um, through my most of my playtime, I did not have to stop the game and pull up a walkthrough. But there is a hint system, if you press triangle, he'll sort of put up a little thinking block and say, hey, do this. And while sometimes these can be rather vague, um, they do help and they aren't too spoiling. You still have to do a good bit of puzzling yourself. And there's only one. There's only one hint per each area, so you can't like overindulge yourself. So when it comes to context, it's very literal. It's very nice and simple that way. So it's good for any age. Um, the only thing I would say for younger ages is a little cryptic, it's a little dark, so that might be scary. But here's that Simon Says puzzle I was talking about. Okay, pretty simple, green, yellow, blue. <laughs> and because of this, you can see there is a fun variety of puzzles and every like every 15, 20 minutes or so, I was going, oh, that's new, oh, that's cool. And because of that, it was really fun and interesting. Okay, these aren't too bad. The game, like I said, is relatively simple. If you are a puzzle pro or something like that, if you dedicate a lot of your time to puzzle games, you might find yourself a little Annoyed because of how simple the game can be easy sometimes, but it isn't too bad. Not only that, but it's pretty sure, and the aesthetic might hook you in enough to make it enjoyable. So here we go, one more time. Uh oh, I might have gotten this one messed up. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Messing up one time, ah oh, no. <laughs> So here we are a little bit farther in the game, a minute or two after, not even really, the next puzzle basically. And we can place this little ball down here. And what is this gonna do? It's gonna go off that way. These light balls are pretty important. When it comes to the story, we see them quite often and they help us solve puzzles in some cases. But yeah, the variety of puzzles is really where it's at. There's no like basis on the mechanics. It's all based on the puzzles itself. So if you're looking for a game that doesn't just rely on one mechanic over and over and over again, this game might be up your alley. 
With Unmechanical Extended Edition, you actually do get an extra episode of the game that wasn't in the original Unmechanical. This is really nice for people who are returning to the game, who played the original Unmechanical, who want to enjoy it again, but see something a little new. Um, it actually takes place after the original story, so it fits in pretty well for those experienced players and for those new players, it gives you some extra content. When it comes to the graphic and durability of the game, it looks great and it plays great. The aesthetic is really nice, the backgrounds are always really cool and ominous, but the game never has any FPS related issues. I feel like the biggest issue I've ran into with this game is that there were one or two occasions where I would solve a puzzle by accident and have no idea what I actually did to solve it, but because of that, there was no sort of gratification for solving the puzzle. It just sort of felt lame. But of course, I mean, that's a very minor complaint comparative to most things. Overall, this game is a really good puzzle game and worth checking out if you have the extra money. So if you've played on Mechanical before, it might be worth picking up for the extra story, but that's only if you absolutely love the game. It isn't a must buy by any means, but overall still a really solid game if you're looking for a fun puzzle game to play and enjoy. Either way, the game will be linked in the description. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like and sharing it with your friends and family, and commenting in the comment section below. What do you think about Unmechanical? Have you ever played it, and do you plan on getting it now? Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.